Hey guys, welcome to our next video. This one is uh, the cardiovascular system. We're going to be taking a look at a few different things within the system. First of all, why do we need it? Similar to how we talked about why we need the respiratory system. We're going to take a look at some of the professions that people have that are related to cardiovascular issues. We're going to talk about how to give a cardiovascular examination, some of the exams that they use. And then finally, we're going to discuss the different types of cardiovascular disease. So first of all, why do we need this cardiovascular system? What purpose does it serve for our bodies? Well, this picture you may recognize from the respiratory video. In respiratory, we are hoping to get oxygen to all the parts of the body right so they can produce cells can produce energy and your body can perform its normal functions and the cardiovascular system is very similar we need that oxygen pump everywhere throughout the body so the cardiovascular system is how we do that we need the heart as that middleman to go to the lungs and get oxygenated blood and then to go back into the heart where it can then pump out to the rest of the body we perform the gas exchange and the oxygenated blood is given to these tissues throughout our body and then sent back to the heart to get more oxygen from the lungs. What are some of the professions that are related to the cardiovascular system? Uh, if any of you are interested in cardiology, there is quite a lot that you could be involved in. First of all, if you have your MD and you go through med school, you can be one of these top three professions. The first is a cardiologist. That's an MD who would be helping people with cardiac issues and performing exams on people. They would be a specialist who people might be referred to if they have heart issues that a primary doctor cannot help them with. Then we have the surgeons. So you could either be a cardiothoracic surgeon or a cardiovascular surgeon. And the main difference between these, uh, they do sometimes perform similar uh, surgeries, but cardiothoracic, they're doing a little bit more than just working on the heart. They're working on the heart, but also you can see the root thoracic in there, right? So they're working on anything within that chest cavity. So cardiothoracic, a little bit more broad, as opposed to cardiovascular, where we're just working on the heart, working on repairing blood vessels, so cardiovascular. And then if you are interested in nursing, there's a couple of things you could do. First, you could be a nurse in the cardiac care unit, um, where you're taking care of patients that probably a lot of the cardiologists are seeing, or maybe who are getting cardiovascular surgery. If you want to take it a step further, you could become a nurse practitioner, and then specialize in cardiac care. So you could be a little bit more on par with what a cardiologist would do as a nurse practitioner. And also we've learned about uh, physician's assistants, PAs, and they can also specialize in cardiac care. Finally, one of the first ways to get into cardiology if you're interested is a certified EKG technician. And what this person does is if they if the cardiologists say, or the cardiac PA or NP, if they're ordering an EKG on a person to learn more about what's going on with their heart rhythms, then they would call in the EKG tech. And this is a person who is specifically trained just to hook people up to the EKG and to um, basically be that person to get the exam and perform it for them. So that's something that you know, a lot of these require four-year degrees. Certified EKG technician would not necessarily be a four-year degree. So something that you guys might even be able to look into uh, sooner rather than later if you're interested. I uh, mentioned that we're going to be talking about the examination. So there's a video that I posted next to this one that goes into a lot more detail about all of the different things you might check in an examination. But some of the highlights that you may be familiar with, some you may not, the first thing that a physician would do is auscultation. 
And that is where they're taking their stethoscope, they're listening to sounds. So if we were auscultating sounds of the heart, we would take that stethoscope and place it at different areas on the chest and be listening for um, different heart sounds that could indicate different arrhythmias or uh, certain blockages. And then palpation would be the next thing. So palpation just means that you are palpating or um, sort of touching certain areas to see if you can feel positioning of the heart or feel pulses. Pulses indicating that the blood flow is in a specific region. Jugular venous pressure is a little bit more complex than the other things on this exam. You're looking at the jugular vein of a patient whose head is at a 45 degree angle, kind of face turned away from you, and you're looking at what point you see that pulse or that pressure, and you take a measurement straight across and then down to the chest. And that distance from that, uh, that vertical point where you see the pulse down to the chest is the jugular venous pressure measurement. And more on that in another video that I posted next to this if you're interested. Electrocardiogram, we've talked about this. Um, EKG or ECG, either one means the same thing. We're hooking up all the leads to you and looking at the electrical activity of your heart, so looking for arrhythmias if possible. Last thing we're going to talk about is cardiovascular disease. There's four main types. The first is hypertensive disease. So we know hypertensive means that somebody would have high blood pressure. Some things associated with this might be an aneurysm, which is basically a ballooning of the arter arterial wall. So you can see there's a few different types that this might occur, one being so tight and big that it actually ruptures and blood spills out. It could also be associated with atherosclerosis, which is, of course, buildup of plaque in your arteries, and that would also cause hypertension. Then peripheral arter arterial disease. That's a circulatory condition. Your blood vessels are narrowed, and it reduces blood flow to your limbs. So that's why we're talking about peripheral disease, reducing blood flow to the periphery, to your limbs. The second type is ischemic disease. And ischemia is any time there is lack of oxygen to a part of the body. So first of all, you can have this associated with atherosclerosis, of course, because if you have plaque buildup in your arteries, you're you've got reduced blood flow, you're not getting that oxygen to that part of the heart. In this picture, you can see kind of a blackened area. And what, so while atherosclerosis is more of a cause of ischemic disease, some of the results would be angina or heart attack. Angina is a little bit more temporary, a little less severe, and it's more of a precursor to the worst uh, implication, which would be a heart attack or we also know it as a myocardial infarction. In cerebrovascular disease, we're talking about cerebrovascular, so blood vessels in the head, talking about blood supply to the brain. So cerebrovascular disease is something like we're talking about plaque earlier. Cerebrovascular disease it's basically causing, um, maybe there's buildup of plaque, maybe there's inflammation in these vessels, and it's causing somebody to have either transient ischemic attacks or stroke. Similar to angina and heart attack, the transient ischemic attack is transient, so it's more temporary, and it's more of a precursor to stroke, which is the more uh, significant condition that you could be in, where there's a blood clot that actually completely blocks an artery or vein in your brain and you lose the blood supply and the oxygen to that part of your brain. The last type of disease would be inflammatory disease. And we know inflammation just means recruitment of white blood cells, redness, swelling, and this can happen a few different ways. The main types are cardiomyopathy, 
So in this case, we see cardio, so we know it's talking about the heart, my, which is muscle, and pathy, which is disease. So this is inflammation of the heart muscle itself. The pericardial inflammatory disease would be inflammation of the pericardium, which is the membrane that surrounds the heart. And then finally, valvular heart disease would be inflammation of the valves that separate the atria and the ventricles. So three different types, inflammation of the heart muscle, the membrane surrounding the heart, and the valves within the heart. And that wraps it up, guys. Um, like I said, there's a couple other videos posted next to this if you want to check out more details on a cardio exam or the more specifically the jugular venous pressure.